I started with this thing, as some of you might know, because I, I felt guilty about unleashing uh, C-sharp on the community, on the gaming community, and mm -hmm. punishing the gaming community. So, uh, so Swift and Godot are my way of repaying my debt to society. Now, there are actually two, uh, two separate efforts of Swift and Godot, right? So the first one is Swift Godot, and it's a bridge that allows you to use the Swift programming language to control Godot, right? To build extensions for Godot, to create classes in Godot, to talk to Godot. And it works on all platforms, Apple, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, all the, Mac, all the Mac platforms that Godot supports, and we support Visual Studio Code if you don't want to use Xcode. Now, Swift Godot Kit, which is the subject of today's presentation, is a library to use Godot as an embeddable component in your existing app. And it is Mac only at this point, right? Mac and iOS only. We don't do any other platforms. And this is exactly what powers, is one of the things that powers um, uh, Zergo. So I wanted, the background of this, and I think it's a funny story, is that many years ago, uh, with Joseph, I started a company called Xamarin. We focused on doing mobile developer tools. We did .NET. So we did the model runtime, we did C Sharp, and we put these things on iOS and Android. And that was our thing. We love mobile and we love .NET, so it was a match made in heaven. Um, and our main product was bindings of the iOS APIs and the Android APIs, and we were very proud of that. But a lot of developers did not have the patience, in particular enterprise people, did not have the patience to write two separate code bases, right? Um, and in particular, when it came to UI, it's like, I got to do C Sharp for iOS and C Sharp for Android APIs, kind of a drag. So we built this thing called that .NET MAUI. It used to be called Xamarin Forms. Now it's called .NET MAUI. Um, and it was a write once, run anywhere stack, very similar to React Native, but for .NET. Now, when we're doing all these things, you have to remember in this time frame, around this era, gaming was massive on mobile. And one of the big, and there were a lot of libraries. There's like dozens of libraries. But one of the most popular one was Cocos 2D. And, uh, and we really like Cocos 2D. Apple also really liked Cocos 2D. So they cloned Cocos 2D, and they called it Sprite Kid. No. Yeah, Sprite Kid. And uh, we also like Cocos 2D, so we rewrote Cocos 2D in C Sharp, and we called it Cocos Sharp. So we had Cocos Sharp, and Apple had their thing, and there, there were dozens. But essentially, Cocos 2D unleashed uh, unleashed many different industries, and and uh, um, and uh, and it cemented a lot of idioms in the industry. Um, but we didn't have a 3D solution, right? And Apple introduced this thing, this very clever thing called SyncKit, which was a 3D modeling API that you could integrate with their AR capabilities. And we really wanted that for our mobile developers, right? And we looked at a lot of different things in that era. One of them was called Erho, another one was called Godot, and a bunch of, there were others like Axiom, and uh, I mean, there, were, uh, there was a Cocos 3D, which was abandoned. Um, so, as I was doing my research, I called Juan one day. He had just released this thing, and I called him on the phone. We got on the phone, and it was a terrible internet connection. It was a video conference, and it was terrible. Um, but uh, and I said, could we use Godot for this? I think that we have a collaboration here. We could, you know, we we could uh, we could work on this thing. And he's like, no, you don't want to use it. And all of this was in Spanish, right? And he's uh, Argentinian Spanish, and it's like, no, you don't want to use this thing. It's not a good idea. Godot is not a library. Uh, you're better off with Urho. And he also said something like, you know, Urho has better, I don't know, PBR, shading, fung, I don't know. He used a bunch of words <laughs> that meant nothing to me. So I said, all right. So what do I do? It's like, just use Urho. I was like, okay. So that tells you what kind of person Juan is, right? It's like, Juan is like, use it if it works, otherwise, you know, go away. And uh, <laughs> so we spent a lot of time making Urho sharp. So as you can see, a theme in my life is I, I like to you know, do these bindings. So we built Erho Sharp that, brought, that bound uh, C Sharp and Erho together. And we make it work on every platform under the sun. Um, but also, at the time, we thought that VR was a future. So we made it work on HoloLens. We make it work with Apple's AirKit and the Google's AirCore. And uh, you know, we built kind of apps like this. This was one of our sample apps. Uh, it was just a. Uh, uh, it was a copy of some game. What is the name? Shooty Skies, yes. And we made a clone of, Judy's, uh, of Shooty Skies, and then we got a, an angry letter from this guy saying, you can't use our artwork. Um, <laughs> and we just made a copy. We were not using there. We just 
used an inspiration. But anyways, we had to change all the animals. Um, and then, uh, you know, it was pretty advanced at the time. That was running an Android. Uh, we really liked what we were doing. And this was using uh, ARKit. So you could actually have characters. And we had, like, uh, follow paths in the world and things like that. But what happened is that Microsoft got very enterprisey, right? Um, and, uh, and they sort of abandoned the gaming world. It's like, well, that's not really our thing. What we want to do is point of sale apps. Uh, so I was like, OK. So both of those projects got abandoned. Uh, but my heart stayed with the mobile users. And I also started to drift towards Swift, as, as, you, as you know. And, uh, and it's a blend of these three really interesting things for me, right? It's the ease of use of C Sharp, the safety of Rust, and the performance of C++. And it's a bit of an exaggeration in all those dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you should think about it. And um, so just as a recap, so what is Swift Godot? So Swift Godot essentially takes, it plugs into the Godot ecosystems, right? So the Godot engine surfaces hundreds of different classes for every capability in the engine. And it's exposed to this really clever system called GD extension, uh, which is actually kind of magical, because not only does Godot expose its internals to programming languages, it's also the system that is used for the undo system. So it ensures that the same, that the GD extension is something that is actually used by the engine itself, right? So it, it's dog footing its own thing. So it's really, really capable. And uh, there's a bunch of different languages. There's going to be a Dart talk this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, this is a Swift one. There's a fantastic binding by the Rust people that is just uh, chef kiss. But of course, as you know, Swift is the best language <laughs> today. Um, today. And um, so what has happened since I first presented my effort on Swift bindings for Godot is, uh, is that we're actually using it in a very large app. So we're using this binding for Zogo. It's about 110,000 lines of Swift. Uh, and a lot of work went into the usability of it. So it was very clunky at the beginning, right? And as time went by, we were able to flink a lot of that uh, clunkiness. Uh, we got, I got now. I got the memory ownership wrong, very wrong at the beginning. And between uh, uh, the effort on Zogo and the community, we, we managed to get everything just right. And we've worked a lot on performance. And a lot of the performance work came out of uh, Swift has also been evolving towards getting more Rust capabilities. So a lot of the new features in Swift Godot are mirrored by the entire borrowing system that Swift has. So we avoid copies, we don't make copies, you know, everything is borrowed. So internally, that's what's happening. Um, this would not be possible with these people. I would say that um, I'm a mediocre Swift developer, and I've learned a lot from these guys. These guys are incredible. I mean, they're, I mean these are people that, that breed Swift, and uh, they've taught me a lot. In particular, Elijah Semyonov, uh, Sam Dean, uh, Rob Mayoff, uh, Patrick Baird, uh, Mikhail Tishin, uh, Nathan Fleet, pa Patrick, I mean, all of them, they're, they're amazing. Uh, and uh, they really came with, with, hey, you're using Swift wrong. So we fix the Swift. And not only we say with the fix, we actually make it really pleasant to use. So anyways, Swift Godot Kit is built on this, but it takes a different approach. So what we do is Swift Godot essentially lets you talk to Godot. And that's fine as long as Godot controls you and it speaks to you, right? It's like have a scene, and then well, you can you can deliver services, right? But you are kind of uh, you're kind of a client of Godot, and in this case, Swift Godot Kit uh, is actually controlling Godot, right? And uh, and uh, and the, and what happens is that you might have an app that does other things. So that was what I wanted to do at Xamarin, right? It's like I have a mobile app, and I actually want to spice it up with a little bit of gaming. Right? I might have a, a point of sale app right, for a customer. <laughs> and uh, I might want to show some 3D models. I might want to show some animations. So this is about embedding Godot into your app right? and shutting it up and setting it up. So the way that you do it in Swift is all you have to do is you include this line. And this magical line includes all of Swift Godot and includes three versions of Godot. So three binaries of Godot are there. So that thing includes three big ass copies of Godot. iOS, iOS, uh, iOS uh, Mac, Intel, and Mac uh, ARM. And once you have that, right? Once you have that, um, you can just call code like this. So you say, 
you create this thing called a Godot app, and that's going to be your anchor. So you can only have one Godot app at a time. So you create this, uh, this Godot app. It loads whatever content you had on this PCK that you exported from Godot, and then you instantiate it, right? So this launches just the default scene. There's overloads for telling which scene you want to load and all kinds of other things, right? But that is the basic thing. So I created this little spinning cube in uh, rotating cube in Godot, and I just loaded it into my Swift UI app. This is a Mac app, as you can see, so uh, not much to see. The one thing that is interesting is that this label is actually being rendered by Swift UI. So this is actually Swift UI, Swift UI, Godot, right? Then, um, oh, well, there it is. Uh, or you can embed the elements directly. So for example, um, in the previous one, I had like a whole scene. But in this case, I say, hey, I want to create a Godot window. So the content thing here is going to be Godot, right? But, and then you get, you get an entry point, your, your view. So you get to attach anything to this, uh, to this view. And in here, I created a VBox container. Like this and Godot API set anchor presets. It's named as in Swift, but that's how you do it. Then I add it there. I create a button, my first Godot button. I, these are all Swift. I mean, all, all of these are Godot APIs, just mapped through GD extension. And then this is Swift UI, right? So this is Swift UI, Swift UI, and the body is Godot, right? Um, and that's again just showing which pieces are which pieces. Um, you can also create subclasses, right? So this is a, uh, this is a class that subclasses Godot. So this is the Godot Node 3D class, right? You put that little attribute, and it surfaces all of your methods. So this is the way that I have projected, well, we as a team have projected uh, GD extension into Swift. So you have to say override func. We kept this convention. I'm not a fan of the convention, but that's a convention in, Swift, in, in Godot, right? So this gets invoked at startup for your node. This is invoked for every input event, right? And then you call all of these methods are all Godot. None of this is Swift, right? This is all Godot land in my mapping. And, uh, and, uh, and here I have just a little program that creates three cubes in the air. So these are programmatic cubes that I created. So these are, these are created with this thing, right? So I created the make cute node, make cute node. These are the dimensions and I add them to my scene. So I have a chunk of the original scene and, uh, and my three cubes. Um, oh, and I have a cute animation. So there's all the, so one animation is being driven by my code and the other one is being driven entirely by Godot. Okay, um, and the other thing that is super neat, and this is what we're using, right, is you can uh, connect any Godot signal and have it post events to Swift UI. Right, so in this particular case, again, here I begin my Godot code. So this is Swift UI up until here. Then this is uh, Godot. I'm connecting a signal handler. This is the way that I map the signal handlers in Godot. And here uh, I am actually setting self.color, which is this guy. Notice that this is a Swift UI color, right? So inside the, Go the, the Godot code, I'm actually changing the state of a Swift UI thing. Um, for those of you that don't know, Swift UI is a peculiar way of writing code in which uh, the UI or the state of the app flows from what they call the source of truth. If you're familiar with React or you're familiar with Flutter, this is very similar. So when I press this button and I assign this color, this random color, right? All I'm doing is assigning the color and that will percolate through the application. So whatever, whoever references this variable, this color variable, will automatically update, right? So, um, so that's the way that you would uh, get this to talk to each other. Um, or you could have this other option, right, where I have, uh, where I have this button in Swift UI. This is a Swift UI button, right? And you can tell because it has a callback at the end. So I said, add cube, and when it does the thing, it just creates this thing and adds it to the screen, right? So when I click that thing, this is Swift UI controlling the things inside Godot. So where are we with this thing? So this whole thing began as a way for me to not have to launch the Godot editor every time I tried the binding, right? Because it's very painful to build a thing, launch Godot, launch your product, get an error, okay, that, uh, that's not. So this cycle was very painful. So this actually began purely as a uh, quality of life improvement for me. And I took this code that somebody had submitted. I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. 
but some nice uh, contributor said, hey, I patched Godot and you can sort of host it. It was not great, but it sort of worked. And that was good enough for me, right? If it was good enough for Jesus, it was good enough for me. And uh, so that was it. But then when we started to work on Godot and iPad, I did the same thing. I just took Godot and I was running a shell around it, right? The, this, as you can see, this is like the original uh, Zogo. This is the Swift UI UI, and then <laughs> the whole Godot was just crunch in there, right? Not very pretty. Um, and the, but one thing that happened is that it was clear to us that we could just not put the whole Godot inside. It was going to be ugly. We needed to extract individual pieces, right? Some of it was the editors, the bottom panels, the plugins that people create, or in the inspector you have the like, little previews and cute like uh, audio playback and things, and it's like, we can't rewrite everything in one go. We'd rewrite a lot, but not all of it. So we needed a way of extracting the UI and stealing the window from Godot and shove it in there. And uh, I didn't know what to do, but we were working at the time with Miguel, and Gurgly Kiss is at the back of the room, He's the president, the CTO of Migueran, and they really helped us. So they did a lot of the work for us on Godot for the iPad. And, uh, and they had just been working with this company called Smirk Software that was doing like a, like a TikTok for games. And uh, they had done an initial work for them. And then Migueran came and said, listen, for what you want, these sets of features that you want. I had a laundry list of things I wanted. It's like, we think that the best thing is to just use this embeddable Godot that we built, which is an embeddable server of Godot. And you'll hear more about it uh, at, uh, at uh, Gurgly's talk uh, tomorrow. Yeah? Tomorrow. And uh, so he said, you should use this thing. And that's what we base the entire uh, Zogo in. The entire Zogo thing is based on his work. Um, so we continue uh, working on that thing. and. Uh, and once that was done, we started to slowly move things out. So here, I know that it doesn't look very impressive because it looks like it's still Godot, but it's actually, we're already hijacking the top window. This divider is SwiftUI, and we're hijacking the separate window, right? So we started to hijack pieces bit by bit. At the beginning, we took all of the bottom panels, and then we started to extract individual panels one by one, right? Or the inspector, right? This is a more recent uh, thing. At this point, we already started to steal these little pieces. So we hijacked the thing from Godot and we shoved it in the UI. Um, so current limitations for this thing. So this really is about people doing iOS and Mac apps, right? It's probably not very useful to other people today. The API is Swift UI only. You can technically use it with UIKit, but I have done absolutely no work on that. And uh, I don't know if you follow this thing in the Apple ecosystem, but there's the old legacy camp right, the Objective-C people, and then some of them, you know, they're stuck in the past. And then there's the Swift UI crowd, and I'm in the second camp, right? So yes, if somebody wants to do it, they probably can do it. I'm just not going to move a finger, right? And again, you, you might not know this internal struggle inside the developer ecosystem of Apple, but uh, you know, the UI kit people say this is the future, and the Swift UI people say this is the future. You know, those of us that are correct are using Swift UI. And, uh, and I have to say, Zogo itself is about 99% Swift UI. It only contains about 1% UI kit. I mean, the bare minimum that we had to use. So, and a lot of people say Swift UI is not mature enough. It's like they're wrong. It's really, really good. So, all of this is pure Swift UI. Um, we did do a lot of features. So what happened is that as we were doing a lot of work on Zogo, it's been, I've been working on this nonstop. I've been working like 12 hour days for the past 18 months. So we haven't really had a lot of time to fall back a lot of our improvements. So now that it's done, now that we ship this thing today, I'm gonna start merging a lot of the improvements that we put in Swift Godot kit in Zogo, and we're gonna put it in the public. But as of today, it's working. I got it back into, into a functioning state a couple of weeks ago, and it's working. Um, I want to bring this to uh, Windows and Linux people because my love extends uh, even to those people that are different. <laughs> and, uh, and that is it, really. Um, that is it. Uh, join us. Uh, these are the two open source projects. Swift Godot is the foundation that I mentioned, and Swift Godot Kit is for those of us targeting the platform. And thank you so much for coming. Yeah.